business. It's a good place. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this and inviting me, giving me the opportunity to share uh, our technology and thoughts about this industry uh, to, the store, uh, to the students and the professionals in Southern California. So I'm Hao Yuan Li, and people also call me Chai. And uh, I'm the CEO of this company, uh, Luxio. And we are the company behind this open source project, which is also called Luxio, uh, which came up from UC Berkeley and Black. Uh, I was a co-creator of the project while I was doing my PhD uh, at UC Berkeley. So before talking about what, what is a Luxio, I want to explain and talk about what the industry, how the ecosystem in the industry look like in the big data uh, ecosystem. So 10 years, around 10 years ago, uh, companies like, uh, like uh, Google published a paper by MapReduce and, and, uh, uh, Map and GFS, which are the foundations of the big data analytical industry. So then, uh, after that, companies like Yahoo, they, start, they started to develop these open source systems like uh, uh, MapReduce and uh, HDFS. They have very simple uh, components in the, in the uh, in starting the ecosystem. So along the way, along the past one decade, you see that different companies and organizations they started to gather more data, store more data, as well as trying to extract values uh, for, through, through sophisticated solutions uh, to help their business uh, to be more uh, efficient. So then, because of this, you can see that the ecosystem has evolved significantly over the past 10 years. And we look at this basically through two, through two perspectives. On one layer, we see this is basically the compute layer, which help you use different algorithms, different solutions to extract values from the data. And the other layer we're seeing is the storage layer. And for the storage layer, um, along the way from HDFS, because of the more data and uh, it's attracted many storage vendors going into this as well. And you can see nowadays, besides the HDFS, originally we have public cloud storage like Amazon S3, like, uh, uh, like Microsoft Google Cloud Storage, and many and private cloud storage like Swift in the many storage from traditional uh, storage vendors like EMC, like NetApp, like Huawei. And then, uh, due to advancement of the ecosystem, people have more ways of dealing with data. However, there are more issues as well. And the very first issue you can see, and the ecosystem became very messy. And therefore, to integrate more solutions into the ecosystem, is harder and harder, and it's not efficient. And on top of that, many of these big data storage systems were not built for this big data workload. Therefore, the performance is, 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 not, is very bad as well. So then, to solve this issue, um, we, came into, we developed a system called Aloxio, and we stay in the middle between the upper layer computation frameworks as well as the lower layer storage systems. And then what we do is that we virtualize the data from different storage systems and expose a unified API with a global namespace to the upper layer ecosystem. And the benefit is that is that we enable different applications to access and interact with the data from different storage systems at memory speed. So that's where we are uh, and how we, uh, why we created this, eco this, this system called Aloxio. And then, to be a little bit more concrete, Aloxio is a software and this is how the architecture would look like uh, without Aloxio, you have applications on top and you have uh, storage at the bottom and they are connected through network. And uh, with Aloxio, what we do 
is that we co-locate ourselves uh, as a software with uh, different applications, and then we connect uh, the applications with data. That's, uh, that's the architecture uh, figure. Okay, so another, besides the ecosystem trend and, uh, and the motivation for developing this, this software as well as this uh, project, we also leverage other trends from industry. And one trend is about hardware. As you can see from the figures, we look at the hardware trend for both memory as well as uh, HDD, hard disk. And what we can see that is that the memory performance is growing exponentially every year. On the other side, the disk performance grows very slowly. And in the meantime, another good news is that along with the performance improvement for the memory, the price is dropping by half every 18 months. And because of this, you can see uh, at the bottom figure, you can see that uh, at the beginning of 2000, the, the firms from Wall Street start to learn DRAM technology aggressively. And then after that, around 2010, the big internet companies like Google, Baidu, start to investigate and leverage this technology. And then after that, around five years, like uh, now, the, 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 this in-memory computing is coming to the, uh, to the mainstream. One, one example is Spark technology, uh, also came out from Ampla, which is an in-memory computation framework. And similar to Spark, serve the in-memory solution for the, for the compute layer, and we are serving the solution uh, between the compute and the storage. So that we also leverage this trend and develop the in-memory uh, centric architecture to best leverage the in-memory technology and provide the best performance. Uh, we can show. We have several cases we can show in the later slides. <coughs> and then, if you look at what is Loxio, where memory speed virtual distributed storage, memory speed means that we have a memory speed access to data. Virtual means we means we virtualize the data. We virtualize the data from different storage and uh, and present a unified API and global view to the upper layer. And distributed, we have a scale-out architecture. It means that you can do, you can use a lock seal with five nodes, fifty nodes, and five thousand nodes, and it will all run fine with a linear scale-up. And then it's the storage. It's a, it has a fast API, as a major API nowadays, and it's a software-only solution. And then. If we look at the benefits to the to the users, it will be the first benefit will be unification. Be much easier for the users to have a global view of the data. This is significant. This is very important for a lot of enterprise companies, for all any organizations. If you want to access more data to generate a, a better insight for your for your institution for your business, and then the second benefit is about performance and we significantly improve performance compared with the previous architecture and we have several uh, results we can show in a later slide. And the th third one is the flexibility. With using a lock seal, it makes you much easier to use new, new technology, both in the upper layer and the lower layer. If you have a new one, you can just simply make it integrated with a lock seal and that will plug into, into the whole ecosystem. And the last one here is the cost. So with the lock seal, we make the separation of compute and storage efficient. And in this way, uh, you can grow your application uh, power as well as storage capacity in your, in your organization independently. And that will decrease your, cost, your uh, spending on the infrastructure. Okay, so after making a very high level overview of Alexio, and I want to talk a little bit about several use cases 
we have seen in uh, in the different uh, in the different companies. And the first use case is about acceleration the I/O to the remote storage. And uh, so a lot of enterprises now they are going to the route of decoupling the compute of and storage. And we have benefits listed in this slide. For example, like one benefit is about the cost I just mentioned. You can decrease the cost, and also it increases the manageability of your environment. And uh, with a lot, and uh, the issue came with new architecture is that the access to the data is slow. And the Alexio came into the picture to accelerate this uh, data access path. And this is the architecture uh, without Alexio. You can see, like you have frameworks like Spark, they will access the storage uh, through network, and this will be slow. And, uh, and this is the architecture without Alexio. And with Alexio, you see Alexio in the middle. And uh, what we can do is that after the first access is data, uh, Alexio will be able to access data from Alexio space. Therefore, it can, which is closer to the computation. Therefore, it's much much more efficient and faster. And for this particular for this particular use case, see we have a we have a white paper. Uh, you can download online. Uh, there's a production use case from a, from a internet client Baidu. Um, they, they run Spark SQL on top of a, a Loxio, and uh, they use a Loxio to access their Baidu uh, file system, uh, which is giant store. And they have been using this deployment for more than a year with more than 200 nodes. And uh, man a Loxio is managing more than two petabytes of space. And in their workload, uh, in their workload, uh, they have seen uh, five times to thirty times performance improvement. And this particular uh, this particular system help their uh, business analysts as well as product managers to get better and faster insights from their users to better develop their product uh, to serve to serve their customers. This use case is the, the same use case I mentioned earlier, that architecture. And then the second, the second case, okay, the second case I would like to mention is about sharing data between different applications. And when you work in a, in a company and you want to derive insights from your data, normally you, you, you have to have a a very complex, uh, comprehensive data processing pipeline. And then, without Alexio to share this data between different applications in this pipeline, you have to go through uh, external storage systems like HDFS, like Amazon 3, like EMC, uh, ECS. And this get sharing process is very slow and inefficient. And with Alexio, what we want to do is to significantly improve the performance in this case. Uh, for example, you see this case, you have a giant storage at the bottom, and you have three applications on top. And uh, in order to follow to process the data, you see that they are slowly uh, read and write data and interact with this giant storage uh, to get a job done. And finally, get a result. And then with Aluxio, Aluxio is in the middle, and you see that uh, the first the first job when you read the data is still sometimes from remote storage. However, after that, this whole process will become much more efficient because all the interaction only needs to happen between the applications with Aluxio, which is close or correlated with the applications. And, uh, and this whole process will become much more, uh, much more efficient. And we have, a, we have another public case, uh, public, uh, public user about this case. This is from the uh, leading bank from Europe, uh, Barclay, Barclay Bank. And uh, what they do is that they run, a Lux, they run Spark on top of Luxio, 
And the Andhra Alaxio is actually a tire data, data warehouse. And uh, in their deployment, uh, it's, uh, it's one terabyte of uh, storage, and they use Alaxio for memory only. And uh, okay. <coughs> and also in this use case, their analysts have found <coughs> their analysts found they can decrease the whole pipeline from hours to seconds. This is very significant. So previously, when the analyst type a query, they can go to chat or just grab a coffee somewhere. And their whole job will be several queries. And now with this new infrastructure, new technology, they can do they can get much more done uh, with this, with the same time or with the less time. And then they use this technology to derive better model, risk risk model for their bank to uh, to get either more money or uh, save the potential loss uh, from the fraud uh, for the financial industry. And this is a second case we'd like to mention today. And the third one is that um, Aloxio help you transparently manage the data from different storage systems. In the meantime, it enables you to have different applications to uh, interact with the same or same storage pool at the same time as well at the high speed. And for this particular case, for this particular case, uh, this is the architecture uh, without Luxio. And previously, it's very simple, just one type of application on top of Luxio with one type of uh, storage systems. And now, what we can enable. is that you can add more storage as well as you can add more compute uh, as well on top. So this technology needs to be improved. Uh, you can see you have a very flexible architecture and to the customer and this new architecture is much easier to use and much more easier to maintain as well. <coughs> And for this particular architecture, we have another uh, case from uh, from Junar, which is uh, China's Expedia. This is a Nasdaq listed company with a market cap of uh, five billion, and they run two type of uh, frameworks on top of Luxio, which is Spark and Flink, to do real time machine learning to serve the uh, ads you have to see on China's website. Now, on the other side, they have storage like like HDFS, like SAP, managed by Luxio as well. And in their deployment, they have hundreds of nodes. And uh, they, they, they have average of 15 times, 15 times performance improvement, and uh, with a peak of 300 times performance improvement uh, for Shunar's case. And in this case, they also use Luxio to manage no memory, they, they manage all the memory and HDD in their uh, compute nodes, in their compute cluster. Okay, so in this slide, uh, we are the company behind this Aloxia open source system. Originally, uh, when we started from Berkeley, it's called Taikia. Uh, and Berkeley Empire is the same uh, place uh, uh, where uh, Apache Spark and Apache Mesos came from. And, uh, and we have been open source ourselves for uh, the software for around three years. Uh, over the past three years, we have been the fastest growing open source project in the big data ecosystem. And you can see, you can see, with these three years, we have more than 300 contributors globally from more than 100 organizations. And here, I would like to welcome anyone uh, in the audience to join the community as well, to contribute and develop a new technology, the cutting edge technology, as well as to use the, pro to use the product, the system, 
provide more feedback to the community as well. Um, it will be a fun experience. And in this community, beside our company, we also have the leading IT companies from the industry, uh, like IBM, like Intel, Red Hat, uh, Google, Alibaba, Baidu, all these IT giants, um, to joint, for, joint force push this technology further, um, further advanced to be better used in the industry. And then, in the end, We'd like to talk a little bit about our company, and that's me. Besides me, that's our uh, VP of products. She had been successfully done two startups before, acquired by AMD and Dell. And in our team, we have people who have PhDs from uh, Berkeley, CMU, Stanford, and uh, and many top universities, as well as people who worked in related projects in the companies like uh, Google, like Uber, Yahoo. And we also have the top nine uh, contributors in the commuters in the community. And the company is founded by a uh, venture capital and Jason. If you are interested in full time developing this, uh, you are welcome to uh, to contact us. And uh, in the end, in the end, I would like to thank you all. And, uh, and here is our contact information, our Twitter, as well as our website. Uh, thank you very much.